So we'll start with a word of prayer. <laughs> Lord God, maker of heaven and earth, maker of all things that are seen and unseen, to you belongs all praise. Help us now to look into your wondrous word and to understand it. We ask this in your son's name, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. Now, I've been talking about, this is, we were, we were just at the Caesarea Philippi and, and we're going, we can, the Lord at this time begins to tell them, they're gonna kill me. For the first time he tells them, we're gonna go down to Jerusalem and they're gonna kill me. He's gonna tell them several times as he, as, he, as he goes from here all the way to Jerusalem, to the Dead Sea. And we were talking about how maps themselves, I believe that even maps in the Bible, the terrain itself is uh, allegorical. It, it's, it's, it's telling you stuff, it's telling you things. The very land tells you things. Um, it's just the way God is, he's genius. Everything, he doesn't waste anything. So we were down at the gates of hell at the very bottom. And that's where waters flow out of there. And, and those waters are gonna go flow into the Sea of Galilee. And then from there, they flow out into the, the Jordan River all the way to the Dead Sea. But that's where those waters are headed. The waters that come, and those waters descend from heaven actually, because they come from heaven and they, there's the snow that falls upon the mountains and then that snow converts into water which really comes from heaven but at that place called Caesarea Philippi they have that place uh, um, called Pan or they call it Banias now um, um, where they had built right over that that pit they built that temple to Augustus and so they're attributing, this is what they're doing, they were attributing these waters, this source of life, they were attributing to Pan. And Pan is the God of nature. So the, to, over and over the Bible tells us <clears throat> that the natural man does not, uh, thinks of the word of God as foolishness because he's, they all, all these people, especially these colleges and universities that are found throughout the world, they want to explain everything the, na the natural way, and that's why we have evolution. Yes, sir. That's where the pantheists come from. Yes. They, every, every nature, everything is all, the pantheists believe that. You know? Very good, yes, that's what they are. They're all into, and they, and they, and they want to make us look bad because they're into nature. I says, duh, that's God's world. Um, nature is God's world. But it's amazing, as you go down this valley, it's, it's descending. It's the whole time you're descending from Caesarea Philippi, which is 1,200 feet above sea level. The Sea of Galilee is 700 feet below sea level. That's a difference of about 1,900 feet. So, and then from the Sea of the dead uh, from the Sea of Galilee, which is 700 feet below sea level, into the Dead Sea is 1,300 feet. So the waters tend to slow down a little bit because you're now, uh, and it's 80, 80 miles, so the waters slow down a little bit, but nonetheless, they're still going down. <clears throat> so it's a picture, allegorical, of life. You start up, and the minute you're born, you're born to die. We're all dying. And that's our destination. The Dead Sea is our destination. So I thought I'd give you this diagram. This is the Jordan Valley with the gates of hell. And the gates of hell is because this is what, what, it, what it's all, all, all of the world, the world out there, the cosmos is telling you, this is all natural. You don't have to go to God. But when you search the Bible or you even look at nature itself and they're both telling you, no, don't do that. That's crazy talk. Do not leave God out of the equation, out of the equation, because that'll lead you to hell. And so I'm going to show you this. So you have the natural side on one side of the valley. Um, since there's two sides to a valley, I just thought I put the natural because that's outside. 
and on the right side <clears throat> you're going to have the supernatural or the spiritual you got to cross the jordan river to the other side and now but notice also here capernaum is where he made his, made his living i mean that's where the lord stationed himself uh, 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 to work when he moved over from nazareth he stayed there and then when it was time for him to die i mean he, at this point he's already lived three years and it's going to take him i don't know whether it's going to be six months because it's going to be a long walk and we're going to be covering that up to chapter 21 but notice at the very end there's jericho jericho has always been a problem because jericho is a fortress it's a stronghold and a lot of people and it's a picture of how a lot of people cannot make it into the spiritual realm because of that fortress or that stronghold and if you and it, God told them to destroy that place and never rebuild it, but they was it was rebuilt. And uh, I'll tell you what I believe that's a stronghold for riches, because as you read the Gospels, there's many many blind people are associated with that. It's amazing how many uh, blind people you find throughout the four Gospels that are there as he was coming into Jericho or or as he was living through Jericho living out uh leaving jericho or he as he was traveling through jericho there's blind people there and i always tell the kids why were they having a blind convention over there or something because there's so many blind people there and i believe this has to do with money riches because remember that woman that lived there rahab she made a living by selling her body and then there was also a a, a man that stole some uh, Babylonian garments and, and a wedge of silver and gold out of there. So that's strong. It tells you something that a lot of people, and the Lord says, hardly will the rich make it in because of that thing. They get attached to things of this world. So, okay, so that's just a. Um, so here you have the waters that come out of the, that Caesarea Philippi, out of that gates of hell. They go into the Sea of Galilee and they're there for a while and then they continue down. They continue down the Jordan Valley all the way to the Dead Sea and that's the end of all of us. We're all dying. Okay. And so, but the Lord has already, because of sin, that's why we're dying. But he died for us, for us all. That's the gospel. That's the beauty of the gospel. That, um, and because he died, look what it says. And he says, he, in, in fact, as he's going about to embark in, or, or descend down this valley, he tells uh, his disciples, uh, if any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. Follow me down this valley. Follow me to death. But like I said before, he got hit by the truck. We got hit by the shadow of the truck. This is the valley of the shadow of death. So, because, he, look at this. At the end, because he died, and this is what Paul says, if you don't have resurrection, we, have all, we, we are, of all people, most miserable. Because the resurrection is key. The resurrection, God, Jesus died, but the Bible says this, because I live, you shall live also. So he says, follow me. And, th and this is what we're gonna, we, we're, we're in chapter 18, and so there's 24 chapters, in, or 28 chapters in, in, in Matthew. I thought we were gonna cover it in one year. Probably not, because uh, we started it in, in, in December, and we started Matthew at that point, you know. But anyway, so here's the thesis we're gonna be looking at today. Uh, Micah 6 8 he hath showed thee O man what is good and what does the Lord require of thee but to do justly to love mercy and to walk humbly with thy God and so this is a picture that valley is a picture of life and as you go through life God makes it very easy here's what he, what he, what he requires of us um, he requires this to do, a, to do justly to love mercy and to walk humbly with thy God that's, that's it if you can keep it, keep it that simple Life consists of doing right and, and to show mercy to others because we love mercy ourselves. I mean, when the cop stops me doing 80 miles an hour, 
And I says, oh man, cut me mercy. I don't want justice, I want mercy, you know? And the, and the officer comes over there, and I'm thinking about this one time I was driving out of Houston. I was doing over 80, and with a bunch of people, you know, I was with a bunch of people, and all of, everybody just all of a sudden slowed down and says, oh well, they couldn't keep up. <laughs> and then, and then over a hill, over, I looked in the rear mirror, and I see a, a, a car. It goes up the hill, and it comes down real fast. And man, that man is, that guy is moving. And when he come back up, I see the little lights. I said, ah! By the time I pulled over, he was right there. And uh, I pulled out my wallet, as he says, let me, uh, registration and license. And so I pulled my, my wallet out, and my uh, reserve card fell out because I had already been out of the service. And when it fell out, and he picked it up, he says, oh, tell you what, I'm gonna cut you slack. I says, thank you, sir. <laughs> but that's, uh, we love mercy on ourselves, and the Lord says, you pass it on to others. You know, you give it out as well, to, to love mercy. And then he says, walk humbly with thy God. That's what the Lord wants, walk humbly. You know, we have, and we need to, that's what he recalls. He, he resists the proud, but he gives up grace unto the humble. So that's what we're taking as our thesis. Now, this is what we left. I, I thought I'd go back a couple of uh, slides uh, where we left off. Uh, and when they were come to Capernaum, because they just left uh, Caesarea Philippi, they left. And I'm, I'm, ha I'm keeping that idea on the, on the right hand side. I put the river of life. I'm, I'm putting that there just to keep that in mind, along with the thesis to do justly, mercy, and walk humbly with thy God through life. And when they were come to Capernaum, they received, uh, they that received tribute money came to Peter and, and said, Doth your master pay tribute? Um, so they just got back to Capernaum, and he's, Peter says, Yes. And it's simple. I mean, it's that simple. He just said, Yes, and I'm, begin I'm thinking he must have been sent by the question, been sent into this great thought. He says, yes, he does, but why would he? Um, now look at this, when Ma back in Genesis 14, 19, and he blessed them and said, blessed be Abraham, this is Melchizedek, he's blessing uh, 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 Abraham. Blessed be Abraham of the most high God, God, possessor of heaven and earth, he owns everything. He owns, God owns everything. It's, I mean, the planets, the galaxies, it's all his. And so, what great truth did Peter just announce at Tessaria Philippi? Anybody? He just said that, this great thing. Thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. Wow. From little old Peter, I mean the little fisherman, and he said this great thing. And the, mo and the moment he said that, the Lord says, "Thou art Peter." At that point in time, "Thou art Peter," because he all his name was Simon, and the Lord says, "Thou art Simon, but thou shalt be called Cephas," which is interpreted Petros or the Rock. Um, thou art Peter. At that point in time, when you come to that great truth. You have now taken, starting to take the characteristics of the of Petra. You, uh, the Petra is the great rock. Petros is a piece of the rock. So Peter is a piece of the rock. Is that you just become Peter because you you're understand. And of course, the minute you understand who Jesus is, I just talked to a man. Um, I was given a ride. I think it's Lyft, just like uh, these people. And he says he was a, a sheik. Um, from India, and he doesn't believe that Jesus is God. I says, "Well, that's the key, man. You don't have you don't have Jesus as God. You ain't got nothing, because uh, that's the key. Um, Jesus has got to be God. And so when Peter says, "Thou art the Son of the Living God," and now he just great, said that great truth, and he's come back to Capernaum, and the first thing that he's, 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 he's confronted with are these people that collect the tax uh, collectors, and they say, hey, does your teacher pay taxes? And he says, yes. But the minute he said yes, he's thinking, 
well, I said this thing, but he said it through the Spirit of God, remember? That's the only way we, we say things sometimes, and we don't even understand. And so he's questioning himself. He's having, he's having second thoughts. Because look what he, when he goes into the house, and when he was coming into the house, Jesus prevented him. Before he could say anything, Jesus says, I know what you're thinking. Because look what he says. Jesus prevented him saying, What thinkest thou, Simon? Of, of whom do the kings of the earth take custom or tribute? Of their own children or of strangers? And Peter says unto him, of strangers. Notice what happened here. He didn't say Peter. He went back to his own name. And I thought, that's strange. The Lord says, Peter, you're going back to the old ways. He says, oh, wait, wait, before you say anything, let me ask you, um, what thinkers, what are you thinking? And he was going the wrong way. Because we tend to explain everything naturally. You know, this is the thing. We're going down this valley and we want to explain everything naturally, but folks, life is so much better when you see everything supernaturally. If you walk in the spirit of God, everything has other meanings. You know, and I like to think, what does that mean, Lord? I'm always asking, what does that mean? Um, so Peter says, of children, uh, uh, not of their children, they, they collect taxes of, of strangers. And so the Lord says, you're right. So then the children are free. The children shouldn't have to pay taxes. But we here in this world, even though we're Christians and we're sons of God and daughters of God, Really, we shouldn't have to pay taxes. But if you don't pay taxes, you're gonna wind up like, have, like Ken Hovine. How many years was he in prison? Nine or 10 years or something like that, right? I don't know, he was, because he didn't pay taxes. This is dummy. <laughs> you're gonna get in trouble if you don't pay taxes. And, and look, and look what the Lord said. Notwithstanding, lest we should offend them. Says, no, we, we're going to pay taxes. Go thou to the sea and cast an hook and take up the fish that is first, the first cometh up. And when thou hast opened his mouth, thou shalt find a piece of money that take and give unto them for me and thee. <coughs> so the Lord says, no, no, we're going to pay taxes. But Peter is wondering if is this, if Jesus the Son of God, because if he's the Son of God, he shouldn't pay taxes. So he's got this question, because he wants to explain it naturally. So the Lord's gonna say, no, Peter, you were right originally, and I'm gonna prove it. And this is what the Lord said, does, look, he says, Peter, so we know that Peter made a living fishing. He's a fisherman. So the, in a way, this, this is really nice how the Lord says, whatever you, uh, is your gift to make a living, whatever you, are, you make a living, I made a living of an, being an artist, folks. That, I mean, I was, I think I was born with a pencil in my hand. I mean, I drew by before, I mean, I was the kid that was always drawn on the walls. My mom finally had to say, you know what? We're gonna give you brown paper bags. Here, draw here. Because uh, I, I wanted, I drew on the sand, I drew on cars, I drew everywhere. You know, I just constantly was figuring things out. And so God uses that. He says, that t t talent that I gave you, that used to make a living. And then when you become a Christian, then he gives you another gift, at least one. So Peter is, we know he's a fisherman, so the Lord uses that. He says, go to the sea, and then look at this. That's one, Take cast a hook, natural. That's for Peter. Peter would have loved it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I can do that. And then he says, go uh, take up a fish. So Peter, the first fish, this is amazing. He says, take up a fish, and then open his mouth, and so... And this is what Peter, I think this is what blew his mind. Right here at this point, it says, what? There's a coin in the fish that's enough to pay for him and for the Lord. So what the Lord is saying is, I'm in control over everything, Peter. Go back to the place I own the earth. It is mine. Peter had already seen the Lord walk on water. He had already seen him quiet the storm. But we tend to forget those things, you know? The Lord has shown us things, I, I can tell you stories. The Lord has shown us things of who he is, but we tend to forget. And the first time the doctor tells us we have cancer, we fall apart. 
I mean, I'm not, I'm, we all do it because we tend to go back to the natural aspect instead of saying, Lord, you're allowing this, right? And he, and sometimes he's going to test you. He's going to say, yeah, you're going to walk on your own here, but I'm going to be right there by you. This is just uh, as a test. So here, you know, so it says, and give unto them. But I'm telling you folks, there's more here because where did the fish get the coin? How did the fish know how to get, get caught? I mean, there's so much more. This is the supernatural side. So, so as we go down this river, the Lord is telling us, I'm going to take care of you. This is what he's saying. And you see the kindness of the Lord. This is the beauty of the Bible is when you read it for yourself. I'm, I read it to teach, but there's so much more I get out of it. Because I says, Lord, you're so good. He says, die your mind. I'll take care of you. Look at the birds. And so this is what you're going to learn. Because look at this. But, uh, but thou shalt remember the Lord thy God, for it is he that giveth thee power to get wealth. It is He. He gives us our breath, our heartbeats, and then He aligns up the jobs we get. You know, the appointments and all that, we think we get on our own because we're so smart or we're qualified for. It's He. He does it all. Um, at another time, I'll tell you how, to, how I got the job at the Express News. I shouldn't have gotten it. You know, I'll just give you a hint. When the, when the, when the, the guy that was hiring me opened my, up, opened up my portfolio, Big, beautiful mahogany desk. He was a, 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 a editor for the. I mean, he was a, the executive ed editor for the Express News in 1983. And when he opened up my portfolio, two cockroaches were on top of my art. <laughs> and they went. He opened it up like this. He, you know, I had it. It was a ribbon. You know, he undid the ribbon, and he opened it, and two cockroaches went like this. <laughs> and uh, I'm sitting there in front of him. I mean, I'm, I'm setting up, I mean, straight up, you know, looking sharp, you know. I mean, whatever he shoots at me, I'm, I'm ready with all the answers. When those things curled out, I just kind of slumped. <laughs> and I was looking at the door, and I was expecting him to see, well, I will call you, you know. <laughs> He didn't do that. He kept looking at the art like this. <laughs> and I'm thinking, those creators, they're, they're, in the, they're, they're in his office. I said, oh man, I'm, just show me the door, please. I need to leave. Show me the door. He says, when can you start? I thought, good night. <laughs> I didn't even talk about money. I didn't. I said, I didn't have. He says, I says, uh, 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 Monday, sir. I says, good. Come on in, Monday. And I just gave me my portfolio back and I says, I walked out. I says, how could that have happened? And the Lord was saying, you didn't get the job. I got it for you. And from there on, from people worried about getting fired or getting laid off, I never did. This is when it's time for me to go, I'll go. And that's, that was the way, that, that's the way it happened. But I tell you what, it is he that's behind the whole thing. And when you look at life like that, it eases your nerves, it calms everything. Because it's he, he's doing it. Life is like that, that river. Now look at this, look what happens here, folks. At the same time, the disciples, came the disciples unto Jesus. Peter's talking to one disciple. He's talking, I mean, the Lord is talking to Peter. And then, who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? These are the other guys. They come in over there and says, because they all have plans. The Lord is going to come, go down to Jerusalem. He's going to become king. And we're going to be his, his administration. I mean, we're all going to be sitting in some place of, of importance. And so he's already told them. I'm going to go down there and die, guys. They, they haven't heard that. And so he does this at the same time that he, he just told, showed Peter, I am in charge, Peter, and we're gonna, I'm gonna, I'll take care of you. But that's what we do, folks. We, we strive, you know? I, I want to I wanna get, get advanced. I want to be promoted to the next level. I want to do this. I want to be better. Uh, so... They come over there and it says, who's going to be the greatest, Lord? 
uh, in God's, and, and, and this is again the kingdom of heaven. Now you got to keep that in mind at all times when you're reading Matthew. Because the kingdom of heaven, this is the only place you'll find it. <coughs> that phrase, you'll only find it in Matthew. And that's the kingdom of God here on earth. And it only belongs to the Jews. But we who, we are Christians, we belong to the kingdom of God. But while here on earth, God still wants us. See, if, you're a, if you belong to the kingdom of God, your destination is sealed. There's no way you can lose it. There's no way. But at the same time, <clears throat> you can be living like the world and losing all kinds of rewards because you, you get attached to the world. So the Lord says, I want your body. I want your physical body. And that's the physical land that he gave to the Jews. That's the kingdom of heaven. So they want more. This is give us more. Uh, who's going to be the greatest? And the Lord says, you shouldn't be concerned with that. And he's going to show us how. Look what he does. And Jesus called the little child <clears throat> unto him and set him in the midst of them. And he said, and said, verily I say unto you, except you be converted and become as, a little, as little children, you shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven. Wow. So he's, he, they just have to ask them a question. Who's going to be the greatest? They're always, and as, and as we go down the valley, the mom of James and John are going to come and ask the same question. Um, we'll, we'll, we'll cover that when we get there. Um, so he says, except you be converted and become as little children, you shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven. He says, turn around or reverse. That's what that word means. They're converted to twist, to kind of go back. Because we were all children at one point, and we were like that. But somewhere along the line, we lost that. Um, we lost that. We became, uh, God put a little child there, a child, so that they would all look at him or her. Um, and when, it's, when we see children, I know that because I work with children for such a long time. Um, children are very trusting. That's one of the things about them. Once they, this is, um, once they know they can trust you, they're very trusting. You can tell them the moon is made out of cheese and you'll get away with it because they are like that. But somewhere along the line, we could become smart and mouthy and says, no, I'm not going to do that. Because, you, you know, and so... The Lord is telling them here. He just told Peter, Peter, trust me. I'm going to take care of you. Down, the, down this, as we go down the valley. But the disciples, he's going to tell the same thing to the disciples. Unless you be converted, unless you become trusting like this, like this child, you're going to, you're going to miss out. Because <clears throat> look what he says. <clears throat> Excuse me. You shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven. You shall not come into, and I believe this is saying, um, it's talking about the rulership here, because uh, we need to see that as you walk here on earth, you need to see the kingdom of heaven and be at all times working for the master or uh, walking in the spirit to be doing the things that he wants us to do. Because if he's king, he should tell us what to do. And we should be doing what he wants us to do. Uh, should we, we should be trusting uh, and, and not be concerned. So you become as children. It's a you or you shall not enter the kingdom of heaven. His rulership here on earth. Is, does that make sense, folks? Does anybody have any questions or points, comments? You could be saved and, and be going to the kingdom of God. Be, once you're saved, you're always a subject but you can be a disobedient subject. Yes, you, you, you can be. Once you're in the kingdom of God, nothing can take you out of there. And I've told kids that before. Moms, I got in trouble with the moms because they would tell me, what did you say? I says, I told them, you can become a Christian and then never come to church again. Never read the Bible and so on. I says, and you're still going to heaven. And moms would says, how could you do that? I says, because it's the truth. I says, I'm telling them the truth. I says, but once you become a Christian, you can't lose it. But then he tells you there's rewards you're going to miss out on. 
because you're living your life. You know, I mean, the Bible says many will show up and will have barely anything by the skin of the, they'll show up in heaven with nothing because they never lived for God. All they did was escape hell, as it were. But uh, so here you have the kingdom of heaven is here on earth. And you can, God says you won't enter into it because if you're not humble like a child, God will never be, he, God says he resists the proud. He'll never work with you because you can't. And I tell you what, I work with clay and I want clay to be free of um, particles, rocks and sticks and things. You know, I first got to clean my clay up really good. And then once it's really soft, because if not, when I'm working with it, it a little rock can hurt me, you know? Um, so I need to clean it up. And so God says, if you're not malleable, if, if, you, if I cannot work with you, I can't. That's it. And that's our, uh, that's our fault. So trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not unto thine own understanding. Proverbs 3, 5 says that. And that's, that's concerning this child. Um, so as we go through life, that's what he wants. And remember, there's always the gates of hell there. Those waters are coming from the gates of hell. If you don't, if you don't trust the Lord, because maybe the Lord doesn't know what I'm going through. I'm a special case. And, but it, we're told there's no thing, temptation taking you, but such is just common to man. You're not special. Yours is not a special case. Um, so he wants us to trust him. Isaiah 5.12, but they regard not the works, the work of God, neither consider the operation of his hands. Therefore, my people are gone into captivity. Therefore, hell hath enlarged herself and opened her mouth without measure. Once you don't, if you don't give God the glory for the work, for his work, it's all his work, this is what can happen. Of course, this is talking about the natural man. Thou shalt true and now I thought I put this here. <clears throat> I know Brother Bez doesn't preach much about this, but once in a while he'll just preach about tithing. But I think tithing is key, folks. It is key. And a lot of people see, I don't I mean I don't get nothing out of it. I mean, I'm just saying this for free for Brother Bez. Um, <laughs> thou shalt truly tithe all the increase of thy seed that the that the field bringeth forth unto year by year. And thou shalt lead it before the Lord thy God in the place where he shall choose to place his name there. That thou mayest learn to fear the Lord thy God always. The problem with us, God is spiritual. He's a spirit, which means we can't see him. Now that becomes a problem because we are, are tangible creatures. We live in a 3D world. And, and if I can't see it, I don't believe it. That's the, the mantra many have. But actually... God says, here's a way you can, I can become really, really real to you. Tithing. Because money hits the pocket. I mean, money is real. We can, we can become slaves for eight, hour, eight hours a day for money. And they can tell us what to do. Collect trash cans, uh, wash windows, whatever. For the right amount of money, you know, we'll do just about anything. Because money talks, money is real. It's one of the most real things here on earth. And God says, give me some of that reality, just a small portion, not big, just 10%, a dime out of every dollar. And it seems like it's nothing. When you do that, when you agree with God, it's okay, I'm gonna give you a dime. But when you start practicing that over 10, 15, 20 years, something happens to you. The reality sets in that 10% from the top belongs to God. No matter what happens, the car breaks down, the refrigerator's out, or you need clothing or whatever, or you can't take that vacation because if only you weren't giving the Lord 10%, He becomes part of your equation. He becomes real. Within 15 to 10 or 20 years of tithing, He will be very real. Especially when you start getting promotions and big money comes in, and you cut him big checks, oh yeah, he becomes very real. Um, this thing, and this, is, this will help you along the road. This is why, because he doesn't need it. And here's another thing, look what he says, that the, uh, 
And thou shalt eat it before the Lord in the place where he should choose. The tithe is for you. He says, you'll, you'll enjoy it. You'll eat it. So there's so much there. So I thought I'd put that in there. Um, oh, that my people had hearkened unto me, and Israel had walked in my ways. He should have fed them with the finest of wheat, and with honey out of the, out of the rock I should have satisfied thee. So he, he says, I would have taken care of you if you would have only listened. Now, look, let's go on. Whoso ever therefore shall humble himself as this little child the same is greatest in the kingdom of heaven and whoso and whoso shall receive one such little child in my name receiveth me now look what he's saying here uh, many people i know commentators uh, i have several i looked at and they're all talking as the lord is talking about the child he's not talking about the child it's something else look at this Whosoever shall humble himself as this little child, the same is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. So if you want to be great, he says, whosoever, that means anybody. You can put your place, that, you can put yourself there. <coughs> you know, I almost took the, I almost put that, took the face of the little girl out and put a blank face in. Uh, but I, it's such a neat photo. I love that photo. I says, no, I, I, I'm going to leave it there. I just talk, speak of it. But that's us. Whosoever. And God says, uh, and all these people are souls. These are the souls that were listening to him. He says, if you place yourself there, because he cares for souls. He loves souls. The Lord came. The thief cometh not but to for steal, to kill, and to destroy. But I've come that thou might, they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. If you want to be the greatest, you want to have more abundant life, here's how you do it. You humble yourself and allow the Lord to work with you. And the king's heart is in the hand of the Lord as the rivers of water. He turneth it wheresoever he will. I also included that, included that verse because as, as you see the... Jordan River, it meanders, folks, back and forth, back. And this in life like that, we don't know what's coming up the, the corner. As life comes at us, there's there's bends. We don't know what's behind that bend. Things that are coming at us. Life is like that. Uh, but the Lord says, He's He's in it. He's in it. Now, and this, whosoever receiveth such a child receiveth me why because he's there with him but whoso shall offend one of these little ones which believe in me it were better for him that a millstone were hang about his neck and that he were drowned in the depths in the depth of the sea so the lord says now anybody that hurts such a child and i've always understood it i mean there's you can understand the bible that way too that because he loves children and I've worked with children for such a long time, and, I, and I've heard stories where people abuse them, molest them, and hurt those children. I says, I read the Bible, and I know what God says, you don't want to do that because bad things happen to you. <coughs> I mean, you don't want to do it because he, God loves children. Um, but in this case, it's also applying to any soul that believes in him, that commits and trusts him. This is anybody that does that, you place yourself in that position, you're dealing with him. That's what you're gonna do, you're dealing with the Lord. And he, that's, you don't wanna do that again. That's a sure way that God will close things up for you. Uh, let's go a little bit longer. Woe unto the world because of offenses, for it, it must needs be that offense come, but woe to that man by whom the offense cometh. So as you go through life, there's going to be offenses. There's no way out of it. Things are going to happen that are going to hurt you, that are going to bring displeasure. Um, the Lord says these are going to happen, but woe to that man by whom these, these things come. You don't want to be that man who's doing these things. These things are going to happen because the Lord, anybody that's, this is why you should never mess with a pastor, for sure. Uh, the one person you never want to mess with, with is a pastor um, because he is in a place, if he's a, a man called of God, you're messing with God. That's just the way it is. You mess with a pastor, you mess with God. Um, 
Wherefore, if thy hand, look what it says, it continues here. Wherefore, if thy hand or thy foot offend thee, we're still talking about offending that one, cut, it up, cut them off and cast them from thee. It is better for thee to enter into life halt or maimed rather than having two hands or two feet to be cast into everlasting fire. This is something really interesting here because, um, again, I say I'm constantly searching. What does this mean? It says, cut your hand or your foot off. Because he's dealing, he says, this is your, 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 your doings or your walk or your flesh. Your flesh can mess you up. So God tends to be saying, because I care so much for your soul, I'm going to do things to your body in order to protect the soul. And doesn't he say that in Corinthians? He says, put that man out. He was a Christian. Put him out that the flesh might be, that the soul might be kept and the flesh destroyed. And the Lord will do that. Now I'm going to show you here. Um, cut them off and cast them from thee. Thee is the person, you, the person that's committed himself to God. And because it is better to go through life halt or maimed. And I believe this, a lot of people will suffer things in their lives because they, con they continue in a way, in a, in, a, in a life that God is not pleased with. And especially if you're his child, because he did this to, I'll, I'll put that symbol over there for Jacob. He did that to Jacob. Jacob was, the Lord took his uh, hip out of joint. And that must have been painful, folks. That must, he, the Bible says this, it says, it's better for you to enter, maim or halt into life, go through life like that, because he did that to Jacob. Look what it says here. And as he passed over Peniel, the sun rose upon him, and he halted upon his thigh. And God did that to him. One night, look at, look at the story. Look at the story. And we're going to close here. Jacob was heading south. He was heading south. Where was he going? To Edom. Uh, to be an Edomite because his twin brother that's where his twin brother lived who was his twin brother Esau we have a twin brother I have my soul and I have my flesh my flesh is my twin brother my flesh there's no good thing in it it lives in the flesh and so the flesh was coming with 400 men and and Esau was he was having a wrestle with to fight against Esau and so that night he was wrestling because he was heading south and the Lord pulled pull pull his hip out of joint. And look what happens. The, as the flesh was coming, that night, he went the other way. You know, in the morning when his brother arrived and they, say, they embraced and so on, and his brother says, well, I'm gonna go south. <coughs> well, I'm not. And so he went the other way. And so, but look at this, folks. This river, Jabok, it means to empty. And that's what the Lord wants. He wants to empty ourselves into the Jordan because that's dying. He wants us to die, die to self. And this is found throughout the Bible. God says, if you will do this, humble yourself in the sight of God and I'll take care of you. And it, we think that it's such an awful thing to, hum, you know, what is God gonna do with our lives? How many missionaries are living well and doing fine because, and, and rewards being stored up in heaven? because they listen to God or they humble themselves in the, under the mighty hand of God. <clears throat> so we'll leave it there and uh, we'll continue there next week. Um, let's pray. Lord God, thank you for your, your, my, your mighty word, Lord. Thank you for the things you teach us from it. And now uh, we give you the praise, the glory, and the honor for beside you there is another God. Thank you, Lord. Amen.